Hello, guys. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Tony has a lot of energy today, as usual, <laughs> and we're going to have so much to share with you. We have been really uh, working deeply on the process of taking action and following our hearts over the years, and it's been a journey, and we're going to talk all about the importance of getting out of your head and getting into your heart and taking some sort of action or choosing to feel peace because it's very easy to overanalyze and go in circles and not do anything at all, right? It's so easy. That's why this pops up so many times. Yeah. That's why we're making a podcast episode about it. If you are feeling like that, you're not alone. We go through that too. We still get in our head, but with what we're sharing in this podcast episode, we found different things that different tools, different ideas, mindsets that really help us limit that right because it's going to happen a little bit at least right There's, we're human so like we have a little bit of a flaw but we can limit that and limit it and limit it where it gets smaller and smaller over time yeah and i think over time after practicing it's just like any skill or sport once you do it a few times you start to get the hang of it and you catch yourself if you get in that mode of overthinking and for me if that ever comes up which I am the only thing that I probably overthink about is food. I think that's the big thing when I'm at a restaurant ordering, when I'm not making quick yeah. decisions. But other than that, like any kind of serious topic, I usually know right away. And that wasn't always the case for me, but I kept on practicing it. And if I find myself getting into that trap of overthinking, it drains me. So I don't want to do it again. So you might notice different patterns for yourself when it comes up. And you'll start to think, oh, that's what happens to me when I'm overthinking. Yeah, you could trace back, trace back in time. I was just doing that before this episode. I was thinking, when do I um, overthink and get in my head? And different things start to pop up. So ask yourself that question. Because you drank alcohol and you went out to this place and every time you do that, that happens. Or was it, it could be a million different pieces, right? Like It could be childhood too. It could be that's childhood. That's a common theme. Yeah. So think about that. And that's what it is. We all have triggers. And that's the thing too. Like, So this episode is titled Getting Out of Your Head Into Action or Peace. The peace part is all about humans, right? Because raise your hand if you've ever gotten your head about other humans. Definitely. We all have. You better be raising your hand right now. We all get in our head about other humans. Why does this happen? Well, it's because, right, we're all human, so we have flaws. So we go out and we mingle together, we communicate, and we get triggered, right? Yeah. And if you allow that to get you in a reactive mood and then you go and you you act on that, you it goes it could go well, down it and it could lead escalate. to years decades and it could compound into something that you're like, wow, how do I get out of this hole? And it doesn't even need to go that far. Right. Right. And sometimes when you're dealing with anything in your life, whether it's like a business or work or relationships, the most important thing that you can do is share how you're feeling or what's coming up for you, not overthink it. And then if you kind of go back and you're like, oh, I could have done this differently. And you think about that and your heart is bubbling up that information then just go back and say, you know, now really tuning in. I in that moment I felt this way, and now I'm I'm changing my tune, or I feel this in my heart, or I should have done this differently. But it's just trusting that process. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be this drawn out thing, which sometimes it happens. Happens with all of us, right? Yeah. One thing that's really helped me more than anything overcome this, it's meaning to where I limit it, like maybe. Um, you know, in the past, I would let it go on for two days and then now it goes down to a half day, right? You're, you're starting to limit the time that you're in your head. The number one thing that's helped me over time mm -hmm. is to decide that I'm going to remain in a beautiful state no matter what. Mm -hmm. And we heard that from a mentor. Yeah. And once I decided it, yes, like you could literally decide right now, you're going to be in a beautiful state no matter what. And that means... It means a lot of different states, right? It can mean playful, creative, happy, adventurous. There's so many different states that could characterize a beautiful state. And when you make that decision that this is what I'm going to be in no matter what the rest of my life, because life is too short. If you've had people pass away, 
you know that life is too short. You feel it right when it happens. And yeah. each time something like that happens or another event happens that makes me realize that life is so short, this beautiful state thing makes more and more sense. So decide right now. Like decide because here's the thing. You will get triggered. If you're around other humans, you're going to get triggered. It's going to happen. So you get to decide how often and how much you want that to build up over time. So the thing is decide right now, I will remain in a beautiful state from here on out the rest of this day at least, and then go the rest of this year, right? Those, and you can anticipate, right? You can think about this year and you can be like, all right, what are the things in the past that caused me to go out of that state, right? You could anticipate that coming this year because patterns repeat. So take time to reflect and anticipate what's going to come. How am I going to, you know, respond differently to that situation when it does come right from this decision of I'm going to be in a beautiful state no matter what. Yeah. That's it. In terms of like relationships and, and different things that come up in our mind, that's one thing that's so important. And then on the other side of things, if you're trying to make a decision to say it's about like a business decision and you're trying, you're overthinking it or a work decision, that's something that you can kind of be in your head and you mm -hmm. can drag it on. Like some people, you know, will stay at the same job and they'll be miserable and they'll just keep thinking about it over and over and over again and have this inner turmoil that they're still there, but not take any action or not decide like, okay, I'm just going to let go of this. I'm going to allow it to unfold and see if it gets better and be at peace with this right now. So that's a common theme that could come up. Even during my readings, I find that people or in our mastermind over the years, people are like, okay, I know they make the decision though. I know I'm going to leave this corporate job. I know that it's not for me anymore. And I'm deciding to take action and I'm deciding to do my business full time. And once I make that decision, it's like everything just starts to open up. And I think that's the biggest missing piece is the longer that we are in inaction, the more painful it is because we know deep down in our heart when something has to change. And if we're overthinking or just recirculating the same stories over and over again, it's just going to perpetuate what you need to do, what right. you already know. Right. And the number one thing that helped our clients like that either took our masterminds or went to our retreats is they made the decision. Yeah. And then what's the next thing? It, missed, it went out of my head. I'm in my head. <laughs> I was like, wait, are you quizzing me? <laughs> no. No. They, well, they made they the decision. decision to show up and I'm going to show up. Oh, no, here it is. Sorry, I came back. <laughs> they made the decision. I'm going to do this. I'm leaving my corporate job. And then they became aware of very clearly of what was that thought or the number of thoughts that kept coming up in my head in the past yeah. that would stop me from following the stream. Because many of our clients, they've had this stream for years. And then finally, they come to our mastermind, our retreat. And then they start to get into action and out of their head. Yeah. And right? it's not like, you know, it's it's funny because some people that will come to even the retreat. Maria's here. Um, Hi, Maria. So some people that even come to the retreat, they're like, okay, this is so crazy, but I'm leaving my job. Like they leave the weekend to retreat and they're like, and it's not that we say go leave your job. That doesn't happen. It's because they're taking, they're investing their time and energy into themselves. They're not pushing away. It's like you're in this space or whether it's in the mastermind or in the retreat, you're in this space where you are being supported and you're not supporting someone else. Because a lot of the people that come to the mastermind and they come to the retreat, they have families, like they have they have children or they have a partner or they're they're doing a million things for other people. And finally, they're deciding I'm setting that side, that time aside for myself to process what's happening or just be. And when you're in inner peace and you're on that frequency, you're in a space of receiving what your heart has been trying to tell you. And that's a big missing piece is not leaving the time to figure out what is it that my heart is trying to tell me. Well, that is the piece because when we're in low energy, we're not going to see clearly. Yeah, you can't. We're not going to make powerful decisions. No. So when people go to the retreat or they go in mastermind, they're in a space where they can expand. They get in this higher energy where they can get out of their head and into their soul they realize the limiting beliefs that are going on in their head. They figure out how to counter those. And then they start to take action because that clarity, like you like you said, they took time to create that space yeah. to raise their energy. When you raise your energy, you see different. Exactly. There's no way that you can get the same answer when you're not in in, in that beautiful state, really. 
because you're not going to see clearly. It's like trying to listen to a good song um, when there's like a lot of chaos happening around you. You can still hear the song, but it's not going to be as enjoyable as if you were alone in your room or in the car driving around listening to that song. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a different feeling. So in order to receive clearly, you have to leave the space for it. Yeah. Yeah. And the number one thing to do to get out of your head is right here. We just said it, get moving, move your body, move your energy and raise your energy levels. Because when you raise your energy levels, you're not going to see that problem the same as you did 10 minutes ago. You're not going to feel like it when you're in that state, like when you're angry or pissed off at somebody or you're confused in your business, but you got to snap out of it. Go raise your energy levels, whatever that is, whatever that is for you. And then all of a sudden, right, we've all done this before. You see the problem. You see a solution to the problem. You see it differently. Yeah. And it's taking that one action. That's what it is. It's like, it's not keeping it in your head. It's like taking the one action of like taking a notebook, like Tony has a notebook filled. He has, how many notebooks do you have? I have so many. Like over 30 or something. And I I have notebooks too, but... Some of them, I mean, he's writing constantly. I have to write every day. So there's another tip. That's me. If I didn't write every day in my journal, I would be in my head. If I didn't create to-do lists, I have like three or four different to-do lists. I would be in my head thinking about it all. Like, oh, he's very like, organized. Here? <laughs> and I did this through necessity. It's not because it sounds cool. It looks so I literally have to do this. If I don't yeah. do this, I would be overthinking like times a thousand all day long. So, so you're figuring out these, it's a strategy and you're figuring out maybe this, this one might work for you. Right, so you figure out these different strategies that work for you. At the end of the day, it's bringing your energy levels up. When I write in this journal, my energy levels go up because I release all that shit that was going on in my head, and I'm able to tap into spirit again, soul, well, who I am. Exactly, and when you're very intentional when it comes to anything in your life, especially writing and getting clear on what it is that you want, that clarity is going to bring things happening faster, and that's going to get you more in your heart because you're going to think, oh, this is what I want. And if you don't take the time to write it down, most likely you're not going to write something that you don't really want. It naturally comes out. It's almost like if you were given a microphone and you had to go on stage and say one thing that you wanted, you might not think you're going to say it, but it comes out of your mouth and it comes out really clearly. That's how it comes to paper for me. Like on paper, when I start writing, every truth comes out on paper because it's easy when you're in your head to have like, for me at least, for me personally, I'll have one thought in my head and then all of a sudden I'll think of, oh, I have to go do this. And you've you've seen me do it. Um, and it just goes in a thousand different directions. So that's one strategy is to get it on paper and take some sort of action too. Yeah. And most strategies are simple. If you realize over time in any industry, they're simple, but applied, they're powerful. Yeah. And we want to hear from you. Was there a moment where you felt like you were in your head. I'm going to give an example that's really coming up to me. And I've shared this like a thousand times with my st- mediumship students and my mediumship members. Sometimes at the retreat, it comes up too. Probably on here. I remember a point where I had these repeated thoughts come up over and over again. At each time I would do an event, the, the repeated thoughts would come up. Oh, I could do better. And I would pick apart how this event was better than that event. And, you know, I could do it like this. And I remember one time I came home to Tony, actually, we were talking after the event because he was at my event and he's like, why are you picking that event apart? Like that, that event was awesome. And I remember saying, well, I could have got a name here or I could have got this detail. It's like the things that maybe wouldn't come up in every single reading I wanted to come up in that moment. So I found myself getting so sick and tired of the negative self-talk, the way I was talking in my mind about readings, the way that I was showing up and and doing an event and then feeling drained after thinking about how I could do it differently. And the sound of my voice when I was was telling Tony or when I was doing events with different people and we would get on this, this energy of like talking about, oh, we could have done better here. And it was so draining to me that halfway through that experience, I decided I'm going to show up and I'm showing up with my heart and I'm not going to overthink this. I'm going to reflect in a positive way. I'm going to see where I could improve, but let the rest go and feel that peace. And I'm telling you, it transformed everything about my energy. It savored my energy where my energy wasn't leaking into a thousand different directions. And that's really painful. Sometimes it's in the pain that we get clear on what is it? 
that we want to take action on? What is it that our heart needs to hear or feel? And sometimes we just sit and do the same thing over and over again until we have enough pain to make that change. Yeah, so embrace the pain. Pain's beautiful because it's part of life. That's how you got the solution to, yeah. to effectively reflect, right? That's one way how to exactly. get out of your head. If you don't effectively reflect, whether you're a medium, whether oh, you're a We have some mediums on coach, here too. Hi, Andy. Andy Hi, Maria. Awesome. Yeah, so whether you're a medium or coach or whatever you do, if you're in a, whatever career you're at, if you're not effectively reflecting and you're just, you're thinking about all the shit that you did wrong, you could be really great at what you do and really not ever see it. Like a lot of times yeah. when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one calls or in our masterminds, we ask our clients, what are you proud of over the last three months? Half of them feel weird saying that because they're like proud. Yeah. And then half of them are like, here's what I'm proud of. So it's like, you have to feel great about saying what you're proud of. Right? Exactly. You don't got to go type it all over Facebook or, but like own that shit yourself. Because if you're an entrepreneur, you're a psychic medium healer or coach, or you're in this, it can be challenging, right? And if you're not your biggest cheerleader, you're not owning that side of you, you're not going to make it in this. And that's why I'm saying like, you have to be very clear about what you're proud of that you've done this year. So think about that right now. It could be personal or right. business. And, and it's funny because I'm giving an example about mediumship, but thinking about, I had a student give me a reading for the Unlock Your Inner Medium. And actually, I don't think she wasn't planning on giving me a reading, but she did give me a reading. She, my person came through to her and it was one of the most amazing readings that I got. And I said, how do you think that you did? And she, she was not giving positive feedback to herself. She's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if it was that good. And I was thinking... This was amazing. Like, this was absolutely amazing. And I've gotten a lot of readings from students. I've gotten a lot of readings from uh, peers because we practice in a group. And I could feel the energy of that. And it was really eye-opening for me, too, because when I see this happen with my students and I see something in them that they might not see in themselves, I could see a piece of myself when that used to come up for me where I like it, it was an amazing reading someone else would say it even the client but for me I could have gotten a name or I could have got this with it and it's just something to think about whether you're a medium or not because this is part of the the human experience of thinking I'm not good enough or are they not going to like me and one of the things that we've talked about before was my big focus was making sure that I was understood, like people really understood what I was sharing. Like it could be anything. Like I don't want anyone to misinterpret my, my, um, So she was trying to do the impossible. She was trying to exactly. literally show someone her perspective of the universe. Exactly. I wanted to, anything that I'm, I'm doing, I'm focused. I did focused. that too so many years. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I was like so focused on, I want to make sure I'm not misunderstood. And I was being actually really selfish because I wanted everyone else to love and accept me, but I also wanted to be myself at the same time, which that can't happen. That just doesn't go together. If you're going to be yourself, you're going to have people not like you, and it doesn't matter really what you're doing. It's just sometimes people don't vibe with the energy of, of humans. But I was so focused on not being misunderstood that there probably were times that I was misunderstood, and I was so focused on being liked that I wasn't being myself. So I started to uncover this and that piece had to come out within my heart, not overthinking, but it was in journaling and reflecting and getting clear on, wait, what do I want? Like, I want to be myself more than trying to get everyone to like me. So that process came up and I'm sharing this personal experience because I think it's important because it's so common, especially in the world of spiritual entrepreneurs. You know, we're not on like this pedestal. We're not, you know, some people might treat you like that if you're giving a reading, but we're humans too. So this is a whole experience that we're going through. And I feel like when we're working with our masterminders, there's certain things that come up during those sacred conversations. We're like, oh, I could see a piece of myself in them at different points too in my life. Every call I've ever done with them, one-on-one, -on -one, any yeah. client I've ever had, I've feel like I see myself in that. And raise your hand if you ever felt like that, right? We're all so similar in that way. And that's why, you know, we all get in our head with similar patterns. If you notice as we're sharing different stories on here, you're probably thinking, oh, I've experienced that before. Yeah, they're sharing actually. Yeah, okay, here we Andy, go. Andy, Jackie, and Maria. Andy says, I wish all mediums had this mentality. I see so many 
that generalize readings and, oh, let's see, I'm always misunderstood, I feel like, and can relate, definitely didn't feel right and have made a point to embrace myself and express myself authentically. Yes, because it's so draining when you're trying to get people to like you. And I'm saying get people to like you. I think just like trying to be yourself and feeling uncomfortable in the process, especially when you're coming out online, it's very uncomfortable. All the focus is on you. You're trying to serve, but at the same time, the human mind comes up and you're thinking, oh, did I say that right? And, you know, was the lighting right? And, you know, all these different moving parts when it comes to putting yourself there's, out there. There's so many moving parts. And that's a, that's another good point for all you don't of want people to get offended entrepreneurs either. is, yeah, you don't want people to get offended. You're in your head. Um, if you're, if you're a psychic medium, your healers, your coaches, your people, people. So then what happened with me when I first started in my business is I'm a people person. Like I love going deep and, and that's what I do for a living now. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And my first year or two in business, I'm sitting here doing a lot of work outside of my zone of genius. Yeah. I'm sitting here trying to create these vlogs and figure out marketing and all this stuff. And over time I had to like simplify it and slow it down. Like, all right, what am I going to master right now? And then I just dove straight into coaching and masterminds. And I've been doing that ever since. And I simplified everything because I figured out I have to operate in my zone of genius. Yeah. When you operate outside your zone of genius, that's when you start to get in your head. Like when exactly. you're when you're in your zone of genius, like part of mine is coaching, teaching like this, um, doing masterminds. Some of yours is um, doing readings coaching, you know, healing people. When you're operating in your zone of genius, don't you feel like you're so clear? Don't you feel like you're out of your head? Don't yeah. you feel like you're in the zone? Like when we're in our business, we need to be in that space 80% of the time. Yeah. If not a hundred percent, right? Like you figure out ways to hire out the things that are out of your zone of genius, right? Maybe at the beginning you have to do things that aren't, but I, I found that's a common thing too, especially with entrepreneurs is like, when especially when they're new is like trying to do too many no, things it's at so once. True. I need to write a book. I need to do this. I need to start this. I need to, and everything takes a skill. Well, exactly. And now with social media, your attention span is like two seconds. You know, with reels and everything else, and it's easy to get hooked in. Okay, I should do this um, platform, and I should do that platform. It's like sometimes, like for me, it started with Facebook, and then it organically built to Instagram. And then I'm kind of trying out TikTok, but I'm just putting everything on on the same thing. But if you were just starting out, it would be very overwhelming. And I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, I, and usually it's a certain age group. They're like, I just haven't got social media down. Like, I don't feel like I want to do this online because I just, I, I don't like the feeling of it. I don't like doing it. Yeah, and it's like, that comes up a lot, it comes actually. up a lot, like the same thing. Like it feels fake. It feels like you're coming from ego. It feels, and I always say, switch it around. Stop getting in your head, switch it around and start thinking I'm serving. I'm educating people. I'm not doing, it's not about me. It's about, let me educate people. And sometimes you have to build up credibility. You know, I might share, share a reel from an event or, you know, we might, might be doing something together. And we're going to share that. And yes, we're in the vision. We're in the picture. But when you get too much in your head, you start to overthink what you're posting, you know, I've what people that. are thinking. I and do like, that still at times. And yeah, and there's times. It's fun. And it's like, at this point, it's like we're showing up just like this podcast uh, video. Easily, we could have said, okay, we could adjust the lighting. Like I could see it right here. There's, there's some lighting that you, we could change. But sometimes it's better to show up rather than showing up thinking that you have to be perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. And one of our um, mentors says, if you're in your head, you're dead, literally, because it takes so much energy to put yourself out there while you're thinking about everything that's going on. So if you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you have to just take action and, and follow your intuition, follow your heart. And it sounds so simple, like follow your heart, follow your intuition. But, but you really mean? do have to simplify it that way. Like you have to keep it very simple. Like it's going back to the zone of genius. Like you yeah. really focus on like, what do you do in your business? What are the one to three things you do in your business to where you impact your clients, create results for them, 
It creates um, business, money, mm -hmm. future new clients. Like, what are those things, right? Yeah. And you focus on those. And focus on serving them. Focus and then it, on and it serving just, people. So it's funny because when you just said that, I thought of something. It kind of slipped my mind. But it was something around... Um, Oh, I know what it is. It just gave me space to, to think about that. So when you're serving people and you're in your zone of genius, like like Tony was saying, sometimes when you're so focused on like your news feed where you're just scrolling for endless hours or you're trying to figure out the next thing and you're looking at what are people doing that's working? Like what's going viral? It doesn't matter what goes viral. Like, yes, it's amazing if something goes viral. But if it's not your zone of genius and, it, you know, you're not really – doing what you love, what's what's the point, you know? It doesn't matter. You could have five people watching your video and they get an impact and there's reason behind that. But what I was going to share with you is, is if you have no moment of that silent time where you have no moment of silent time where you can think on your own, the creativity goes downhill. And the way creativity happens is when it comes in through the heart. But if you're too busy looking around and being in your head and overthinking, you're going to have no creative energy. You're just going to duplicate everything that you see. So it's not really from you. You're just looking at what look good, what looks good on the outside or what they did looks good. So let me just do what they did and it will work for me. But that's not following your heart. That's that's being in your head. So the creativity piece is all about the heart. And, and that's where it grows. That's where the creativity grows. Absolutely. So um, we've loved hearing from you on See here. See if there's any, I think a couple people commented, commented recently okay. there. Yes. I'm get my head, I have to myself, it's not about me, it's about helping. Yeah, it's yeah. about helping and holding space for others. Exactly, yes, Maria. That, that's it because there's been so many times and even it, it comes up to till this day where I'll get in my head about a post or... You know, uh, we're going to create a podcast or whatever. I actually on podcasts, I don't. I feel like we just know that. It's usually like if I'm going out to type a post, something like Tony that. Creates I might all get in the my head for these for these podcasts. Yeah, posts. but it's you got to switch it, right? You're like, no, I'm serving them. Like it's the reason why you started doing this in the first place. Like if I go back to the reason why I started to show up online, I was doing this behind the camera, right? That's just true. Like you. Just like you, most of you that are showing up online trying to help people, you're doing this behind the camera. You didn't just start doing it because you're like, oh, I'm going to be famous now. Or I'm going to be seen, right? Some of you are doing it for that. But most yeah. of you are doing it because it's real. It's what you've always done. And, and a part of that being seen, it's funny because like that human side of yourself, you want to be seen for the hard work that you do. Oh, yeah. we all um, But at the same time, there's another piece to it, like really deep in your soul you're really looking to serve people. That's it. But then there's moments where there could be insecurity, like, wait, am I doing a good job? And then you're like, I want someone to recognize that I'm doing a good job. So it's like half of that. But like you just said, Tony, I was just thinking before we go, I want to share this story. Before Tony was even a coach, um, he had been coach, at, like coach online or in the business field. He was coaching friends. He was coaching family. And I've seen the transformations in these people. Physically, they look different. They released all of this energetic weight and physical weight because of working out with them or getting in, like getting the repetition of Tony's voice in their head. And they've actually come to me to tell me that. So um, it's real. Thanks for all the compliments. No, it's true. It's true. So I'm sharing this because there's moments in our life where we start to get in our head about what we're supposed to do or what we should focus on. But normally you already know the answer because you've already been doing it before you even started the work that you're doing. So think about what you're really good at. If you're someone that's a great talker, then maybe what you're doing is connected to speaking to people. If you're a great writer, maybe you're educating people through, you know, typing a, a book or a blog or whatever. But think about the things that are natural for you, because that's when everything expands and it gets bigger and your heart gets bigger. And each person that we're in front of and um, each situation that we're, we're in front of, too, when your heart gets bigger and expands, you start to have people gravitate to you. And it's like they gravitate to you because you're meant to impact them or or they're meant to impact you. 
So it's like a domino effect of how this happens. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Hi, Melinda. Melinda is here too. So what, it's so good to see you on here, Melinda. So what we want you to do is share with us in the comments any insights that you received from today. If there's anything that popped up and you're like, that hit my heart or I could relate to that, um, share in the comments. And then also share, yeah, share like one strategy that you'll use, whether you thought of it on your own just by watching this or it's maybe something we shared on this episode. Yes. So we will see you guys next week. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Bye.